Make sure this is all set up and our, our red light is blinking. Okay, that means we're recording and this is fantastic. Uh, all right, folks. Well, thanks very much for watching. And if you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, thanks for listening and whatever platform. So um, today I'm bringing a, a special guest who i um, gotten to know a little bit over the years, although I haven't seen you in probably three or four years now, but uh, we've talked a few times. And uh, my guest is a creator, founder, right? Founder and creator mm -hmm. of Animal Flow, something that is very familiar to a lot of uh, people in the movement industry. So I'd like to uh, welcome my guest, Mike Fitch. Thank you for joining me, Mike. How's it going, man? Hey, man. So good to see you as well. You know, I, when you said three or four years, time becomes so distorted, uh, especially, you know, as you know, when you, when you travel and, and, you know, as you're in different time zones. And, yeah. and so, you know, you could have said it was 10 years since we saw each other or last year, and I would have believed you either way. <laughs> so <laughs> it's great to see you, man. Uh, you look very well, and I'm uh, looking forward to talking to you. Oh, you too, man. You're looking great. And um, I, uh, I, I was just thinking, I think the last time I actually saw you face to face might have been in Arizona where you met Brent Brookbush, Dr. Brookbush. And at the, uh, Optima, he was working correct? on you and you were teaching him stuff. And then all of a sudden I saw him doing postings of Animal Flow stuff. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, Optima. yeah, you know, I love those conferences for that. I mean, if nothing else, you know, if, if nothing else, and of course we get to work with incredible attendees from all over the world, but you know, it, I really enjoy and cherish the time that I get to work with other presenters and learn more about them, go and watch them present, you know, take little bits away, not only from the, their information that they're providing, but also the way in which they communicate. And so I love being able to share some of my knowledge and some of the things that I do with, with, with some of the other presenters and then happily take whatever they want to give to me. So that, that meeting with Brent was great. And, um, you know, there were multiple meetings at that then in ASM Optima that were, you know, really yeah. stand out. Yeah. I remember you guys had, uh, I think a workout out in the courtyard or something like that, didn't you? It was we did. That was really cool. I couldn't come because I think I was speaking at the time. Or I don't know what was happening, but um, I caught the, like the last five or ten minutes. So, was, man, that looks cool. That's great. Yeah, we were lucky they had that big, you know, grass area. It, it yeah. was pretty, pretty dang hot Arizona, but yeah. uh, but overall, it was it was nice that we had, um, you know, that was available to us, so we could do this big animal flow group session, and, and that was a lot of fun. That's great. That's great. So how are things going? How's the animal flow going? And before I uh, actually let me kind of direct us down a certain path here. Um, I know that the last time we spoke, you had a new uh, addition out. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Um, what's new in your world? What's new in the education? Uh, right now, it's April 28th, 2020. So for anybody watching in the future, we're in the midst of the quarantine, the uh, the COVID calamity, the whatever it is, but a lot of things have changed for people. You know, some people have been impacted very, very, uh, very much with health issues from this, if not COVID, you know, other things, but financially, economically, and maybe even just being depressed because they're home all the time. I'm happening to very much enjoy it, but uh, although COVID is very bad, um, how is it affecting you and your business and what have things been like leading up to this since we spoke the last time yeah so just to give you and hopefully if you're watching or listening to this in the future this is a thing of the past and we're no longer dealing with covid in the same way that we are now but uh just to give you a little bit of a background information so with animal flow we always considered ourselves to be an education company and so for we've been around for almost 10 years so we're almost a decade About that and just had a call try to come in there uh we we spent the majority of those years educating fitness professionals and so we have animal flow certifications that you know if you're a personal trainer physio chiropractor yoga instructor pilates if you have some sort of accreditation in the the fit professional world you can come in and take our certification so anyway so 
the you know seven of those eight years we really focused on doing live workshops and so this year alone i think that we had about 230 workshops scheduled all over the globe wow and so now we we have 20 master instructors and so master instructors just means that title means that you can teach the level one workshop and so we have this incredible team of rock stars that we send out around the world and so our business model was pretty much reliant, relied, reliant upon uh, the live workshop experience. And so it was about seven months ago, six or seven months ago, we did decide to shift slightly and start offering a platform that was more direct to consumer. And so we, we started what's called the Animal Flow On Demand channel, which is a channel that you can find online you can also there's a corresponding app that you can use you can find it on smart tv like uh, on a roku or something like that and it's tutorials classes and flows and so we put that out i think just about seven months ago and of course when everything changed with covid and the coronavirus we as a business, we, 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 you know, but as I think everyone was coming to the realization that this is, this is reality, this is happening, this is going to change the way that we do everything. We, I'm not going to lie, we got pretty nervous because, you know, the online platform that we had put out was still relatively new. And so, of course, it was building a foundation. And then we had to cancel the majority of our live workshops uh, almost all the way through the year. Yeah. So we were put into this situation of, okay, well, we can't necessarily as a business rely just on the on demand because again, that's still new. We're still promoting it. We're still building our subscription base, but we can't do live workshops. So what can we do in order to pivot and reinvent ourselves? And this was also when everyone else in the world started using streaming services and streaming sites more. And so the volume was so high that I don't think that some of these different platforms had the capacity or the structures in place to allow people to do things successfully streaming. I mean, even we would just do Zoom calls with a couple of people uh, just to do tests and we would have freezes and crashes, et cetera. So we knew, of course, the logical idea would be for us to start offering live streaming workshops, but we didn't know that the technology could support that. And so we decided to bite the bullet and go ahead and begin scheduling some of these live workshop experiences. And we also knew that we didn't want to just record something and just give people recordings because, you know, part of the live experience is getting the feedback, being there to, you know, to uh, feel like you're part of the group, that you're not just alone, et cetera. And so, so we decided to go ahead and start doing these streaming workshops. And then fast forward, I, I think I've done, I think I just finished my fourth live streaming workshop. We're now allowing all of our, encouraging all of our other master instructors to do the live workshop experience as well, streaming. And Good. it's been, it's been an exceptional experience. And, you know, as I mentioned before, the, the new reality that we're all, you know, becoming accustomed to very quickly, part of that new reality is this, right? It's, I mean, it's, it's communicating with people online through these different streaming platforms. And the cool thing about doing the workshops in this way is that we can give live feedback to the people, you know? And so we cap our workshops at 25 people and we're just constantly being able to do adjustments to help them work through some of the obstacles that they're coming up with or, or working through in their, their animal flow practice. And then we allow them, and then we put them in breakout groups where they can teach each other because that's a huge part of our workshop as well. So man, I have to tell you, it's it was very nerve wracking in the beginning to figure out how to pivot and reinvent ourselves, but it's been really exciting at the same time. And uh, of course, you know, uh, it, it is unfortunate that the entire world is going through this and, and there is so much devastation that's happening with it at the same time. Yeah. And, but I, you know, it is also very interesting to watch how people, and or companies are adapting. And it's exciting in a way to think about what will happen after this when people have been so creative in, in changing their systems and putting new systems in place. And then whenever everything goes back to normal and the world reopens, we'll see some really cool things that people have invented to get through this time. Absolutely. It seems like um, a lot of times when 
when there's a real struggle or the times are very, very trying are, are when the, uh, I can't say really the, the leaders, but some of the leaders are the creative uh, people. They're, they're just going to find new ways. You know, a lot of good things can come out of times like these, even though it is a devastation for, uh, devastating for so many people. Yeah. And, and, you know, the pressure quite often, you know, humans are we're, we're tenacious, you know, we, we, we want to get through things and we figure out ways. And so it's, it's really cool to watch how people are, are doing that. It is. Yes. So that's really cool. Um, that's great. You're doing the live streaming. Um, actually that, I'll look at the schedule because maybe I'll do a live streaming as well of, of your, your uh, thing. Cause I actually, what happened is I had a hip replacement four months ago and two days ago, four months ago, December 16th. And I'm telling you, cause the pain was excruciating for so long. It was so bad. And now it's, it's unbelievable how well I can move. I can't even believe it. I feel so lucky. So now's a really good time for me to get into doing some of that. Oh man, that's great. You know, uh, at, at one point I went through a course to become a medical exercise specialist. So to, you know, to work with pre and post rehabilitation uh, with therapy, th therapy. And um, that was one of the things that always stood out to me is whenever they said, most people that have a hip replacement say they wish they would have done it 10 years earlier. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I didn't wait too long, but I do wish that I went forward a, a, at least a year, year and a half earlier. But uh, I had people trying to talk me out of doing it too. And mm -hmm. so, you know, my quality of life right now is so bad physically with the pain. My life is great, but my quality of movement and how I feel and how I sleep, it's hard. To, and I'm an expert at sleeping. Like few people sleep more easily and better than I do. Um, and I was not sleeping well. That's a problem for me. So yeah, <laughs> that might have been a deciding factor because like, I need to sleep where I'm not that nice and uh, <laughs> feel awful. So fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you said quality of life and that, you know, uh, I, I'm of course not a huge advocate of of surgery in multiple cases, but with something like that, I mean, you know, there's only so much that you can do to repair that joint or, or the tissue within the, you know, in around the capsule. And so if it gets to the point where you need a hip replacement, I say, you know, that that's one of those scenarios where it's like, uh, go for it, especially if it's affecting your sleep, especially if it's affecting your day to day, hour by hour quality of life. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, life is so much worse for a lot of people than it was for me at that point before the surgery. But, but still, I was feeling miserable, and I really needed to change that so that I could just do more for mm -hmm. everybody, you know, including myself. You know, be more so I can, you know, help other people, be better at my job, be able to do my job better because I can move better. I this is really funny. So a year ago next week i was in mexico in uh chihuahua mexico to speak at a conference and so i did my thing and then i had the next day off i hung around and i kid you not the next day after that was the parkinson's five kilometer walk run so i go over there and you know still delivering a little presentation for like five minutes and a bunch of presenters it's very motivating very inspiring so we all set off to do this stuff and i came in this is parkinson's okay and a lot of times they have slow slowness of movement i came in last place and i was trying not to but it's because i could barely walk because it hurt so bad i'm limping uh -huh. no kidding last place and you know i laugh about it and i was laughing about it then too it's all like, oh, you people Parkinson's beat me <laughs> <laughs> so then where when, when's your next race <laughs> ah, I, no i don't think um not, i'm not doing any <laughs> you know i actually like to really enjoyed running like, especially in colorado now you're in boulder right now right i am uh -huh, okay. correct and my uh, one of my instructors who uh is animal flow level one certified at um allison we were out there a couple of years ago beautiful state we went to, uh, have you been down to the Manitou Incline in, uh, near Colorado Springs? 
No, I have not. Oh, yeah. So you go up Manitou Incline, it's very, um, for, for most of us, probably not you, it's a humbling experience <laughs> to make it up that incline. It's really something. But they have this beautiful uh, trail down. It's just under a mile going up this really steep incline of stairs, like railroad ties. And then it's, it's called Bar Trail, I think, B-A-R-R-E. Three miles exactly down, winding around. I mean, that was my thing, man, especially being in Colorado, running mountains uh -huh. down. But if I run now, and, and I don't mean to talk about myself, I really want to talk about you <laughs> and your businesses. I don't want to shorten the lifespan of this hip, so heavy, like high impact can shorten the lifespan. And so I'm doing climbing and hiking and a lot of bicycling. And oh, that's great. Well, okay. man, I, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more as far as the beauty of Colorado. It's just, it's insane. And I've been here just under two years here in Boulder and I'm still just exploring Boulder. Like I haven't even, you know, I haven't even really begun to explore the rest of Colorado. There's just so much here and you just have access to so many different activities yeah. that are outdoors, you know, and um, I, I, I now live right at the base of the foothills base of the mountain. And so, you know, I can be on a trail within minutes, which is fantastic. That's so nice. I'm quite enjoying being in Boulder. And the next time you come back, uh, I'll, I'll know the trails even better. So I'll be sure to take you out. I would for a walk. love to. I would love to do that. I mean, I can run a little. I just don't do it for long spurt, uh, periods. Um, are you, is there a place out there called like a something rock theater or Red Rock or? Yeah, so Red Rock's. Red Rocks. The Red Rock Theater is out here, and that's a, a giant amphitheater that is nestled between these two huge Red Rocks, as you would imagine from the name. Have you been and, there? Oh, yeah. I've seen many shows there. It's, it's oh. incredible. Just the feeling of being there. And the cool thing is, is it's open, I think, I believe most days of the week. So you go there any, any day, especially during the day, and you'll see 30 to 100 people working out on the stairs because... Oh. You know, you have all, it's all stairs and, and amphitheater seating. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's just such a cool vibe there. And then when you actually see a show, it sounds fantastic because you have all of the music echoing off of the rocks and it's just, Jeez. you have the, the open sky. It's just, yeah, it's a beautiful experience. So if you ever get a chance, if anyone who's listening ever get, gets a chance, go see any band at Red Rocks. It'll be a fantastic experience. <laughs> That's great, man. That's great. Um, uh... Well, let's, let's go back for a minute because, um, you know, originally I had the idea that maybe we'd be talking about, which I've talked about with quite a few people, is to, the idea of uh, um, what, what is success to you? I mean, in the eyes of many people in our industry and um, other industries, I mean, Animal Flow, uh, you are very successful in, in this, you know, 230 workshops scheduled globally, 20 great instructors. Um, I mean, in only 10 years, you know, and that's, that's just amazing. I remember the story you told me about sort of how you started this, but how is, uh, and now with your adapting to online and streaming live workshops, let's touch on that topic of success. You know, what, how do you view it? What does it mean to you? Um, how do you measure it? Yeah, you know, and that's such a great topic and such an interesting one that, is very multifaceted, you know, especially with my experience of what I consider to be success. And, you know, I've got, I've got a really fantastic team. So our, our, our team, you know, I, Karen, whom, which, you know, who is my business partner, who has been from, from the very beginning. And then we have uh, just a few employees. So our, our immediate team is pretty lean. We could do a lot with just, you know, a handful of people. And as we were we were coming up you know so as as animal we had launched animal flow it was just karen and myself and and we were shooting our own videos because uh, she she has a doctorate in sociology but she also has a degree in film and so she was a client of mine when we first started oh, wow. and so i would recruit her to you know shoot shoot our videos we would do our tutorials we did our first animal flow dvd where we shot it and edited it oh, cool. and so you know whenever of course, as you're coming up with an, you know, or when I say coming up, as you're, you're progressing with an idea and a concept and you're putting it out there for the masses, 
you have these little tastes or little, you know, appetizers of success where, you know, oh, wow, we sold our first DVD. That's awesome. You know, or we sold a shirt. Wow, that's incredible. You know, I'll never forget when I first uh, started offering the Animal Flow certification workshops, the first workshop I had one person in. And that was, that was a huge success. It was like, wow, one person showed up. You know, so it wasn't that it was discouraging at all, but there were, there was only one person. It was like, wow, I got one person. That's great. Yeah. And so along the way, we would have all these little moments of, wow, that, you know, this is success, even though at the time it could have been something as simple as, um, you know, I'll never forget when I stopped training as a one you know an hour by hour session trainer and i started only teaching workshops and managing animal flow that was a huge point for us same thing with karen whenever she left the nonprofit that she was working for and switched to doing animal flow full time that was a huge marker of success you know and then as we began to bring on our master instructor team that became you know another another marker of success and then you know having a couple thousand instructors around the world and then uh you know five thousand and then i think we have over ten thousand instructors now globally Whoa. and so you're just you know you're watching all these these little things where you just kind of look at, at your team and you go is this really happening you know like we're just we're just kind of fumbling through this doing the best that we can intuitively and it's it's working and i think the the main driver of course has to be it has to be the passion it has to be that this is something that you love so much. You're willing to work literally 24 hours a day to do it. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I think most people that aren't, aren't representing their own business or product or whatever, I don't know that they realize that there, there's no time off. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you typically take weekends. You don't, you don't finish uh, at 5 p.m. It's every second of yeah. every day. And it's, you know, it's especially when you're working with other countries and other time zones, you may have a call come in at 3 a.m. that you have to answer, you know. And so it's, it's being available all the time. And that's why I say you have to love the thing so much that you're willing to give up everything to keep it going. And so that's, you know, the passion has to be the driver. Uh, otherwise, it, it can seem not worth it very quickly. And so, you know, we, we, of course, as a team, we, we get tired sometimes. We have to build each other up. But, you know, the, the great thing that, that, again, shows success to me is whenever I see videos online, I see people posting on social media doing this thing, uh, animal flow, that they love so much. And that fills me up and that gives me energy and that allows me to continue. And, and um, you know, so anyway, so, so seeing that globally, seeing it affect so many people, that is, is one huge, again, marker of success for me. Uh, so, and then on a personal level, I, I do have to say, you know, on a personal level, when thinking about what is success, and, and this is very personal as far as monetarily or, or financially uh, speaking, for me, my marker of success was never that I wanted to buy a house or buy a boat or have possessions. It was actually quite the opposite. It was my level of success or marker of success on a personal level was that I wanted to get to the point to where I didn't have to think about money. And so not that I would be focused on any number that would say I've been successful, but the point to where it was not a stressor for me. And right. so the point where I could have convenience, you know, so if I wanted to have a nice dinner, or wanted to take an Uber, or wanted to, you know, fly first class or, or whatever. So for me, my personal level of success was, not having to stress over finances that you know that and everyone does it differently too i, I think that um i should say does it measure success differently it has different meanings for different people but i uh i love how you just described all that and i you know passion seems to be the thing that if you have the passion and really if that is the driver and you give up what you need to because you love it so much. You give up a lot of things and you're working all the time. And I, I can relate to that, <laughs> you know, but other stuff seems to follow as far as, you know, you have something out there, you're helping people, people are moving better, whatever it is, you know, your program helps people. Um, 
I love it when I, I can relate to this too. I love it when I see a post that's something that they did, they learned from us and but now they're using with the people and then the people feel better. That right here, that's, and then I get the passion. I'm lit up and I'm ready to go more, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's incredible how much, how much that can fill you up and give you the energy that you may have been lacking. You know, just watching someone else benefit from this thing that you put out into the world and yes. you see their love affair with it. And that just, again, it just, it keeps you pushing forward. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. Uh, so what's, what's happening in the, what's the latest um, education or, um, Maybe I should just say this, what, what's out there for people right now that they can get online and go and they can, you know, purchase some education or uh, a live workshop or products? You have, uh, what's available? And it's for uh, Animal it's Flow? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for Animal Flow, right now our offerings are the the online workshops, so the, the streaming workshops, as we had mentioned before, and we we have our level one workshop that I'm currently teaching and then some of our other master instructors are now starting to teach uh, in different languages uh, as well as also teaching English. So as that used to be more geared towards fitness professionals, we are now allowing anyone to take the workshop. So even if you're, if you're not a fitness professional, but you want to take the workshop just for your own practice and your own experience, you can certainly do that. Uh, you can even go through the test out process, but just to get feedback. So once, once you take the certification, if you're not already a fit pro, then you can't become a certified animal flow instructor. But again, if you want to take it for your own practice, that's certainly an option. And then we'll, we'll start offering our level two workshop online as well. And then also a workshop called advanced flow design. But of course you would have had to have taken level one before you can take those. Yeah. Um, but then also we do have the on demand. So the on demand channel, as I had mentioned before, we have, it's a subscription-based channel, so you know, first week is free if you want to try it out, and then. Uh, I'm on my phone channel. right now. <laughs> I'm going there now. I'm gonna check it out. It's not awesome. Uh, on the channel or the app, because there's again, there's a corresponding app. Uh, you can find pre-designed classes of all different lengths, so anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes, wow. and then also all of our all of our tutorials from the level one and level two bank. They, those are on the, the platform. And then also we do a flow of the week every single week. So we send out a new flow. And usually those flows are like three to five minutes long. And then we, we, we instruct you through the email on how to create an entire workout out of the flows. Oh, so um, this. there it is. All right, folks. Those who are watching, I'm on uh, in the app store for, I have an iPhone. So Ammo Flow on demand. Get... <laughs> yeah nice okay so so oh, that's great. we have those two offerings the workshops as well as the the on demand and then we are currently working on our kids program cool. yeah so we'll have a animal flow kids certification for our instructors and then we'll also start offering some kids classes on the app beautiful so that's, that's our really next nice. big push yeah oh, that's fantastic wow yeah, you know, so I was talking recently with, uh, do you, I hope you don't mind if I just mention somebody else during your interview, but. No, you can mention whoever you'd like, my friend. Actually, when I've seen a, a lot of the videos that I've seen are, are you, uh, in fact, I think in the 2.0, I have, because uh, I have that, there's you and some other instructors um, doing outdoor flow. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there are extra benefits, especially if you not, not just the flow that itself, but being outdoors, for example, the grounding. I mean, if you're flowing on some grass somewhere, you're actually grounding at the same time. Yeah. And I just last week had a, a, a brought a gentleman on this guy who wrote this book, Go Wild, and many other books, too. It's, he's a Harvard neuropsychiatry professor, Dr. John Rady. He also wrote User's Guide for the Brain, Spark. And something I need to learn about more because of my ADD, driven to distraction. <laughs> but you know, when I think about all the benefits of flow itself, and, and what you have out there, because it's just 
what I really love is uh, it's a workout. First of all, it's a workout, and it seems that I'm able to push my range of motions many times to, let's say, pretty far. But it helps mm-hmm. me as I practice to get further with range of motion, and that's why. And you know, we had that conversation on the phone a couple of years ago to just make sure it was cool to use a little in. Of course, we always credit you too, but is in our workshops is to get people moving again like that because. It's almost like, uh, especially outdoors, flowing, grounding, the benefits of being outdoors, especially if you're barefoot doing stuff. I mean, it's just so powerful. So powerful. Yeah. And, you know, you have a lot of cool things happening, just like, like you had mentioned, you know, and we have, we have so many sensory receptors in our hands and in our feet, you know, and, and those receptors of course are always sending information about temperature texture pressure all these different things that that are is you know afferent information going into our system and then we process it you know the 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 unfortunate thing is quite often is as people don't spend much time moving barefoot um, those those messages can actually be muted or turned down and so while our feet have this great potential to send us information, that information can be quieted or even distorted. And so, you know, the cool thing about putting both hands and feet in contact with the ground and creating these or performing these motor tasks or these movement puzzles that, that we like to perform in animal flow is it's just a rich environment for learning and for the system to continue to learn and proprioceptive information. But even more than that, uh, I think it's now been a couple of years, we had, there was a couple of guys who are animal flow enthusiasts who did a study, I think it's called the Benefits of Quadrupedal Movement. I, I don't have the exact title, but um, they found with just within four weeks of taking a group of people through an animal flow program and you know, all quadrupedal movement, that just in four weeks, there are noticeable increases in markers of cognition. Uh, as well as joint repositioning sense. And so, you know, obviously the joint repositioning just means their proprioception or awareness of where they were in space, but also increasing their cognitive flexibility, which is really, really cool because, you know, we know during the motor developmental stages of baby learning how to crawl, um, you know, there's a lot of cognitive functions happening and processes happening there. But uh, I think it's lesser known that as adults, we can continue to benefit uh, the brain by getting on the ground and moving around. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, I, first of all, you are right, but if anyone listening or watching has any doubt about that, um, John Rady, the doctor who I interviewed again, the same guy at Harvard, he talks about how, first of all, movement. I mean, the research is out there anyways. It's not just him. It's, it, there's a lot of it to, support this and we know that it's true but movement itself just moving because we were actually designed to move as humans mm. we're designed to move we're not designed to sit in an office chair for eight hours a day um it's just the way life is for some people but we were designed to move and movement itself will light up the brain then when you have that input like you're saying this these these uh sensory receptors on the palmer skin and the planter skin i mean it that lights up the brain even more. And yes, absolutely. That, you know, I used to teach for Dr. Emily Splickle. I know you, you know, Dr. Emily and uh, we, yeah. And so I learned a lot about all that there because of the barefoot, uh, uh, well, it's a barefoot training program, but yeah, I just, I'm always barefoot when I'm working out too. And, and, you got me talking flow here, man. I'm going to make you proud. I'm going to post and tag you. <laughs> Please do, man. I would love to. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I don't know, folks. Are you ready to rock and roll? Because I am. I mean, when I get off this, I don't have anything to do the rest of the day. So I think I'm going to practice something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and the cool thing is, is, you know, I mean, in, in the animal flow program, we, of course, have, you know, rules that we give and we have instructions that we give on performing these moves to our parameters but man just getting on the floor like it does you know it doesn't matter how you do it just get on the ground move around and you know it, it will be a rich experience for your body and quite often very humbling when you realize how just how difficult it is to support your own body weight and move all 
all four limbs in different directions that you know indoor at the same time and so it's it's yeah. it's a rich experience so that's really interesting about the four weeks with the people in the um improved cognition because that that's another thing too that you know of course again the same guy talks about it but it, there's all the research showing that um our brain can continue to keep growing new neural pathways constantly, even till we're in our 80s and 90s and beyond, but also then grow some new brain cells. Certain areas of the brain can grow new brain cells. So uh, movement can be the catalyst. It's great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, and that's, you know, uh, of course, when most people think of exercise, they think about the physical benefits of, you know, less body fat, more muscle, but uh, it's, it's rare that you hear people talking about just how beneficial it is to our brain as well. Yeah, yeah, it, it's huge, it's huge. Um, well, this, is, uh, this is exciting stuff, I just love it. You know, and, and now, uh, compared to when I spoke with you the first time, when I have such, I'm such a geek, I'm always wanting to learn and, um, I knew some stuff last time, but this time I have a way better understanding of so many different different things. And that's why, uh, well, it's one of the reasons it's great to talk with you again, because I can actually absorb it now. <laughs> it makes more <laughs> sense, you know, <laughs> that it's just being here and saying stuff. I get it. And it's, that's exciting stuff. What's in the future? What do you see happening down the road? Um, in addition to what you, you're doing now, which you've adapted and you have people doing live streaming workshops and you're doing them. What else is down the road for, yeah. animal, for animal flow? So, yeah, so, you know, we'll, the cool thing as we go forward is, you know, just like we had mentioned earlier on this, this conversation is that when the world does reopen, of course, it will be a slightly different world than we're used to, and, th and there will be a transitional phase as, as everything begins to open up again and as we're learning how to deal with COVID. Um, but we'll get to see where once we start implementing the live workshops again, and we'll start at a reduced capacity and then we'll systematically as CDC says, you know, groups above 10 people are okay. Then we'll start adding more people, but um, we're going to use them as the guideline. And so we'll see where we will then have different offerings. So if you want to take the live workshop, we'll have the live workshop. If you want to take the streaming workshop, we'll have the streaming workshop. And the cool thing about that is it allows you know, my personal schedule for travel had very much, I had decreased it uh, because I, I, I just felt like I wanted to be in one place. I wanted to be grounded more. I wanted to have roots and I didn't want to be on the road as much because as you know, I traveled exclusively for two years where yeah. I moved to a new country every month. And that was yeah. fantastic for spreading the word of animal flow and getting people involved, but it was very taxing on my body sure. and, and my, my psyche and my brain and my experience as a human. So I, I I'm traveling much less now, but to now have this opportunity where I can still teach workshops and someone who may not have been able to leave their country to come train with me, they can do it from their living room and I yeah. can do it from my living room. Yeah. And it's just, it's super exciting, you know, because the, the, the future is just there. There's so many opportunities there. And, you know, what we may do, and we, we started talking about doing this in China is we may, because our, our partner that we work with there, they, uh, they don't have the, the social distancing restrictions right now. And so they can actually bring bigger groups into their open gym space. And so what we'll end up doing is maybe have 20 people that will be the attendees, the attendees, and then uh, we'll, we will project on the wall uh, one of our master instructors teaching. And there is the possibility that we could do that at multiple locations at once. So we may have four different oh, locations yeah where the same instructor is teaching. And then we would have two of our, what, what we would call level two instructors there at each location to be hands-on giving feedback as well as a translator. So, um, you know, there's the, it's just so cool to think, wow, you could potentially have one person teaching four different workshops and then still those attendees would get hands-on uh, feedback from the level two instructors who are there at each location. So again, it's just, it's just exciting to think about, wow, what are the possibilities? And then that, in addition to once we're able to do live workshops again, and we can actually send people across uh, borders. So, yeah, so yeah. we're. Gee, that's cool, man. That's really, that's cool. 
yeah so it's multiple at the same time with one instructor and then some couple hands-on people at each is really good yeah yeah so that's uh the, the future looks promising i think that's fantastic man um well you know i didn't tell you that i was going to ask you this i just didn't think of it before we started talking but i know you'll answer it <laughs> <laughs> that's quite the same and it won't be hard for you because you because like, like everybody says about you is that guy man mike fitch he's he's got his shit together <laughs> So, folks, we were talking off camera before we started, and, you know, um, it, we, we love it when your name comes up because you've inspired so many of us. And those who don't know you, they, it, when they start to get to know you and see what you're doing, they, you inspire them, too. So I appreciate your inspiration to me. Thank you for that. Oh, thank um, you, man. So my, uh, my question is, do you have any takeaway message for people? If you were to give, let's say, one set of advice to send people off with what would it be so you know i think whenever we're in this this is, i'm going to be echoing something that i said earlier which again is is the love story and so you know there's so many people right now especially in in our industry who are figuring out or trying to figure out ways in which they can they can reinvent themselves or put their 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 passion out to others. And so I think the two things that I can tell people to hopefully inspire them is find the thing that you love. So find the thing that drives you. And once you find it, just be relentless in your pursuit to, to share it with others. And, and so, and when I say that, of course, I'm, I'm referring back to what I said earlier about knowing that it's going to be a 24 hour a day job. So you have to love that thing so much. So uh, I know I'm repeating myself, but then the second thing is if you are, if you have the opportunity, and this has been our motto since we began is don't work with shitty people. You know, I forgot, but you actually said that when we were talking at some point in the past. I totally forgot. That's good advice, though, man. That's great advice. Because they'll man, drain your energy and all that other kind of stuff. It's horrible. It's so true, and it's so simple. You know, if, if you're starting to deal with other people to where you're making partnerships or you may find someone that wants to invest or whatever, if you don't align with them in your values and the way in which you think and, and your personalities – then it's most likely not going to end up well, or even if it, if it does work out financially, maybe you feel the burden of it. So, you know, it's always been our rule is work with people that you enjoy working with. Yeah. Well, both things you said are great, great advice. And I, so I'm a little bit repeating myself too, but um, you know, speaking from life experience myself, I wasn't, wasn't until I was, let's see, 59, so 50, 51 or two years old, I actually figured out what I want to do when I grow up. And that had to do with, you know, what I've been doing with the movement disorder world. You know, a couple of years as a trainer, working with weight loss, weight loss clients, and it's okay, but it didn't excite me that much. It's just not my thing. We all have our thing, but I can say that uh, I can relate to that very well because even though it is work, it, sometimes it doesn't really seem like it. Sometimes it does, but not as much as uh, other jobs I could have had or clients I could have worked with or things. Yeah. Great advice, man. Yeah. You know, and that you, you, you said such a, a valuable thing there, which again is, you know, there's that old saying of if, what is it? Something about like, if you do the thing that you love, you never work a day in your life. I don't believe that's a hundred percent true. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not uh, true a hundred percent. <laughs> there is something to that where sometimes it's just like you have to take those little moments where you go, wow, I can't believe that I get to do this and I get to make a living doing this. Exactly, man. Exactly. And there are those, yeah, I've had those times. It's, so I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you that you're doing what you love to do and look at where you're at, man. It's global. Animal flow is everywhere and it's really cool. I'm, I'm anxious to watch you grow further and this is exciting. 
Well, thank you, man. Thank you. And, and uh, uh, you know, and same back to you. I'm very excited for everything that you're doing. It's been great to watch your growth as well. So, so props to you as well, my friend. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're working hard with the team, the four of us, the core four, we call ourselves, to uh, mm -hmm. Sunday meetings, short meetings. We're, we'll be out there. But um, so animalflow.com, that's the site, Yes. Right? Okay, correct. So the domain, I'll have a, a link to that. And um, so if you don't mind, if you just hang on with me for one second after I end the recording, uh, again, thank you, my friend. Thanks, Mike, for joining us. My always pleasure. Great to, always great to see you. I always feel so fired up when I see you and we get to talk and have some time. Um, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks for those who are listening as well. Hope you found this to be uh, inspiring. I sure did. And definitely go and check out Animal Flow. If you're not familiar with it, just get to animalflow.com. Or actually, I did. I have it here now. Um, the, the, the app, the Animal Flow on demand app so it might take a second to load because it's my first time but go and check out what mike and the team is doing because because it's great stuff that's why and you'll feel good <laughs> so thanks everybody thank you mike have a fantastic day thank you buddy my pleasure <laughs>